23, Bruselas Mayweather at 27 years old, still one of the youngest big stars in the sport. He's three years older than Bruselas. He's one inch taller. He's got a three inch arm length advantage measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in under the 140 pound limit. Tonight, Mayweather has appreciated only up to 142, unofficially on our HBO scale, while Bruselas comes in at 150 with a functional eight pound weight advantage. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Floyd Mayweather, Henry Bruselas fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case of cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we get her to score cards after four rounds have been completed, and he cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim! Roy Jones, uh, Henry Bruselas' plan here is to try to get to Floyd Mayweather's body, extend the fight, and hope that he can wear Floyd Jr. down. Is the 16 and a half foot ring going to operate strongly in his favor? No, uh, actually it's going to cause him to get caught with more of those vicious punches by Floyd Mayweather, so I don't think it's going to really work in his favor. Jim, uh, I spoke to Cotto uh, earlier tonight, asked him what chance his friend has and Cotto actually was trying to mimic Mayweather in sparring sessions with Bruselas, who he's known since he's 10 years old. And he says, this will be a test of whether Mayweather can deal with a really strong, well-conditioned uh, junior welterweight. Like himself. You can add to himself also a really talented, strong, well-conditioned Junior welterweight. Like Costa Zoo? <laughs> well, Costa Zoo is a great puncher and a great fighter. One of the best 140 pounders we've seen. Uh, he's, he's getting on in years. How many, how many fights does he have left? And here's Floyd Mayweather Jr., who's getting an enthusiastic reception from the relatively small crowd on hand. The nature of the reception is welcome. The size of the crowd is not what Floyd would have been looking for, but maybe the worm is turning on his public appeal. Jim, I don't recall a fighter as talented as him who has made less of an impact for whatever reasons. Uh, about 4,000 tickets were sold tonight. Not a single national writer is covering this event. Born to fight and regarded by all observers as either the number one or the number two pound-for-pound pound fighter in the sport. Floyd Mayweather launches another effort here to make his public appeal match with his amazing talent. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from American Airlines Arena here in Miami, Florida, Top Rank Incorporated is proud to present the featured bout of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC number one ranking in the world in the super lightweight division. Sponsored by sportsbook.com, sanctioned by the Florida State Boxing Commission Executive Director, Jason Penley. The chairman is Eduardo La Casa, Vice Chairman Don Bowen. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be Harold Lawrence, Gary Ritter, and Peter Trimitera, and when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jorge Alonso. And now for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get her ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Wearing blue with red, white, and blue. Official weight, 138 and three quarter pounds. Professional record, an excellent one. 21 victories, including 13 knockouts with only two defeats and one bout even. From Gorabo, Puerto Rico, here is Henry El Nitro Bruselle. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. Wearing blue and white, official weight, 139 pounds. A perfect professional record consisting of 32 bouts. 32 victories, including 21 knockouts from Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
the two-time world champion, the man recognized as one of the pound-for-pound pound best in the world today, former super featherweight world champion and former lightweight champion of the world, the undefeated pretty boy, Floyd Mayweather. Bruselas. You don't believe me, no? You don't believe me? No, okay. Mayweather, center ring, chief second. All right, I spoke to you in the dressing room earlier, okay? I gave you all the instructions. Let me remind you, I want a clean fight above all things, and I want you to protect yourself okay. at all times. Give me clean breaks on the break, okay? Okay. Yo te di las instrucciones en el camerino, okay? Vamos, Antes que nada, quiero una pelea limpia. Cuando yo diga break, me hacen un buen break y no me tire golpe en el break. ¿Estamos de acuerdo? ¿Alguna pregunta? It's as good here. Esto está bien aquí, vamos. Okay, one thing. Chuck Ruff, okay. We've had fights Touch. with high expectations, Touch. with low expectations. This one has no expectations because we simply don't know what the sellers will bring to the dance. Well, you know what he's expecting to see at the dance, that's for sure. Mayweather in his last few fights has been noteworthily more offensive minded than was the case through much of his career. Perhaps looking to improve his crowd appeal and stamp himself a more exciting fighter. He's taken more risks, even allowed himself to be wobbled just a little bit by Demarcus Corley early in his first 140 pound assignment in Atlantic City, but he went on to whack Corley out of there, knocking him down in both the sixth and eighth rounds. Zealous, his plan is to go to the body and see if he can extend Mayweather through a long fight and wear him down. And he threw the first two body shots as he got Mayweather to the far side of the ring. Floyd has been brilliant in recent fights with straight right hand leads and right hand counter punches. Mayweather loads up a right hand and bangs it off the side of Priscilla's head and goes back to work with the jab to the body. Yeah, he's using the jab really good cool early in the fight tonight. Jabbing both upstairs and downstairs, and there's the right hand lead. Right. Right. Knew it wouldn't be too long for that came. Let's go. <laughs> it's been his money punch in the last few fights. And I guess he lands it, Roy, because he's just so quick on the trigger. Just so quick, and most guys have their left hand a little too low to catch it. Rosales is holding his hand very high, almost inviting Mayweather to throw to the body. Uh, maybe he doesn't think Mayweather punches that well to the body. Well, when a guy's as quick as Mayweather is and lands as easily as he does to the head, Maybe it's easy to see why Floyd could sometimes go without throwing body punches for a longer period than most fighters. Because he doesn't have to wear a guy down to land something to He can do it when he wants to. Anytime he gets rid of it. Throughout his career, Floyd has been extremely adept at hearing our commentary in the ring during the fight. And he made a point of winking at Roy and me as he brought his head over the top of Priscilla's shoulder about 30 seconds ago. But now Priscilla's has clocked Floyd with one good solid right hand. Left hook. Our interpreter, when we go to Bruselas' corner where they'll speak Spanish, is Jerry Olaya. Breathe very deeply. You see, you see, you're at his level. You're at the level of all of the rest of them. You can do what you want to do, but you have to work it a little bit more. Work it a little bit more. 
You okay? You're at his level. You're at his level. It's just that you have to take out your plan of action. Execute your plan of action. That was an interesting comment from Brusellis's corner. Uh, obviously, he's fighting a, a fighter way, way above the class of fighter he's usually accustomed to facing. And his corner is trying to convince him, see, you can stay in there with him. He's not that much different than you. Whether it's true or not is another matter. Yeah, because then immediately they asked, are you okay? <laughs> As if there's a question about it. Tell us about the value of working down and up or up and down the way Mayweather has been using his jab so far, Roy. The jab up and down is basically to work the man's hands, make him use his hands to block low and high. That's why Floyd to sneak the right hand in like he just did. So you take that jab and you make him use his jab left, I mean make him use his hand to defend the body shots and the head shots and you can sneak the pop watch shots that, in. Marcellus got in one solid left to the body. So far focusing almost exclusively on the body is Marcellus. Quick left hook by Mayweather. What well, Brucellus would want to do, like you said earlier, Jim, is extend this fight into a long fight, and hopefully he can get some more punches landed, because right now, Floyd's speed is really killing him. Yeah, Brucellus is, is not working Floyd enough, not putting enough pressure on him to achieve what he wants to achieve over the long course of the fight right now. No, he's letting Floyd fight at Floyd's pace, and he'll never beat him at that pace. Because Floyd has the quicker hands. Explosive right hand over the top by Mayweather. Now Brucellus tries to bang away to the rib cage inside. Mayweather slips the wild left hook. And there's the right hand lead again. Mayweather can land that right hand lead pretty much at will. If you watch Brucellus, just notice that he always falls forward on his left foot because he keeps his weight all on his front foot and that way he cannot avoid the right hand lead like that right there. Those fighters have to set up good power punches. Mayweather so quick, he can just lead with them. A la Roy Jones, who used to lead with left hooks, or Muhammad Ali. This is what the artists can do. Whether justifiably or not, Brusellus' confidence seems to rise just a little bit as he makes it through the first two rounds. Wednesdays at 10 p.m., tuned to Inside the NFL. This week's show includes exclusive game highlights of tomorrow's conference championship games and a look ahead of the upcoming Super Bowl. Tuesday, January 26th. Catch the, or January 25, I should say. Catch the next Real Sports. Among the stories, a profile of broadcaster Joe Buck, play-by-play -play man for both the Super Bowl and the World Series. Next Saturday, Arturo Gatti takes on Jesse James Leha with a 140-pound title belt at stake. Also that night, 154-pound titles Kasim Uma faces off with Kofi Jantua. And February 19, on the speed of middleway champion Bernard Hopkins puts his title belts on the line against Howard Eastman, and Jermaine Taylor matches up with Danielle Edouard. How big a threat is Eastman to Bernard Hopkins? Uh, I don't think he's too much of a threat. He's not a bad fighter. Pretty good fighter. Smart fighter. But Hopkins has been impeccable. Through round two, Floyd Mayweather has landed 40 of 84 punches. That's nearly 50%. Brucellus, 15 out of 71. Throwing 35 punches per round won't get it done for Brucellus, who needs to somehow force a pace that could wear Mayweather down. Hasn't happened yet. 
Good quick left hook inside by Mayweather. Throw Lucellus into the ropes. And one thing about Floyd, every time he lands a power punch, he's stepping away with his feet. So that he's never there for the return ticket. A very smart thing to him. Yeah, but, it, but also that's why most of his fights in the last few years have gone the distance. So he dominates the fights, but he doesn't really put mean intentions into his punches unless he has the guy hurt badly. Well, the name of the game is to win the fight. Well, right? and, he, and he does it in a beautiful style. I'm not, I'm not critical of it, but I'm just saying that he doesn't really put everything into his punches uh, usually. The name of the game is hit and not get hit. Well, he sure does that well. <laughs> at that, he's the master, right? That's right, and that's what you got to be the master at. What, what I like about him is his name of the game is not don't get hit first and hit. He does try to hit first. One point of all this, Roy, is to try to visualize what might happen between Mayweather and Arturo Gatti. Is Gatti sufficiently quicker or more powerful than Bruselas that that would look different? Well, the problem is going to be the speed for Gatti. I don't think Gatti is no quicker than Bruselas, and that's where the problem comes. Because if he can land punches on Mayweather, he'd be good. But he's not as fast as this guy. And I don't know that he would be able to land those big punches on Mayweather, given that he's not as fast a puncher as Mayweather is. Or Bruselas, for that sake. He's definitely the stronger puncher. So Gaddy's strength against Mayweather's speed and fluidity is the essence of that matchup. Yeah, but it's going to be very difficult for Gaddy because it's going to be hard for him to catch him. You know, it's almost like the Vander Holyfield fight that he had last had. The guy he fought was such a quick fighter that he would have been difficult for Evander even in Evander's prime. Larry Donald. Yeah. And that's the same thing that uh, Gaddy's going to be facing when he fight Mayweather. Zellis manages to trap Mayweather in the corner for a moment and bang a couple of punches off his body. Mayweather grinning at referee Jorge Alonso as he broke them up. As we mentioned, Henry Bruselas of Puerto Rico goes to the corner to listen to Evangelista Cotto, the same trainer, who trains his own nephew, Miguel Cotto, regarded by many as the fastest rising prospect in boxing and another of the stars in this weight class. Henry, you gotta work it, man. You gotta move your hands. Throw the jab. Even if you don't hit it, but you gotta use it. You gotta move him. Get him out of the room. Don't try and guess. Don't try and guess when you have to do a good, a good hit or move, good moving. Jab, jab, jab. Get in timing when you did right now. Two jabs on the right. And then you hit him on three. And he didn't do anything. He didn't do anything offensively. That's the door. That's the door that's gonna open the road. There's Miguel Cotto, impeccably dressed tonight. Maturity way beyond his tender years. A boxing businessman from Puerto Rico, unbeaten so far. And maybe down the road he fights Mayweather, Gatti, Costa Zoo, some of the other stars in this division. Vivian Harris. Harold Leto, and how do you have this one through three? <laughs> okay, Jim, 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing, Floyd Mayweather Jr. You know, Jim, what, he keeps this guy off balance. When Bruselas is looking for the lead left hand, Floyd hits him with a lead right hand, and vice versa. And also, in the third round, Floyd Mayweather started to come over the top with that right hand. And I'll tell you, he's got a lot of power behind it. Great defense by Mayweather. Bruselas is missing like crazy. Mayweather now going shoulder to shoulder with Bruselas. What's the point here, Roy? Well, now he's looking to start doing some damage to Bruselas. Take some of the fire. I mean, realize the ring is too big to keep moving away from you and give him more confidence. So now he's starting to look to land some bigger punches on Bruselas. This is how he fought Philip Endo in his last fight at 135 pounds, just hanging in the pocket and tattooing Endo with straight right hands, like that. And that's what he wants to do. He knows he has the advantage of this. No more now, no more! Jorge Alonso warning Mayweather about using his elbow to push Priscillus away. <laughs> Our 
hard right hand across the top of the forehead by Mayweather. Body shots by Floyd with the left hand. Able to land hard to the body with the left hand while keeping that right hand pinned against his chin. These straight right hands are landing flush over and over. Mayweather trying to show that he could stay in there with a strong natural 140 pounder. He having started his career at 130. Yeah, he hurt himself there with that left hook to the head. Because he's landed so many straight rights that Priscillus didn't see the left hook coming. Offensive round for Mayweather, who has stayed mostly in the pocket through the full three minutes of the round and used his tremendous hand speed to land more or less at will. Like the uppercut and the left hook that wobbled Brusellis again as the round came to a close. You had in that round. You ready to give it up? Put his cuffs off. He's cut. Fuck that. You tell me I'm cutting. No, no, no. Okay. Hand is cut. Okay. Run him back downstairs. You heard him to the body. Bad. Okay? Watch that forearm and the head at the same time. He's doing two. He's doing two. You watch it. Well, when I, I, I answer. No, no, I don't talk to me that. Hey. Run him up the middle. Run him up. You can't uh, stop him. Run him up the middle. All you got to do is keep doing what you're doing right now. Don't make that move cover up. He's watching him, but they're watching him. Go cover up. Keep touching him out there. Go, go down there. He don't like it. Okay, he's fine. He see Floyd using that left elbow to push to get a little space. Right there, he pushes off a little bit. And he comes back and he shoots the right hand over the top of it. It's a very smart move. Boom, good right hand over the top of it. And he's not really pushing hard. He's just holding the man off of him. Power shots in round four. Mayweather landing 23 out of 35 of them by CompuBox count. That's 66%. I don't care if you're the lightest hitter in the world. It's going to be hard for the opponent to hold up under that. not the lightest hitter in the world. No. If anything, he's added power in his last few fights. One of the sharpest punches in the world. And speed brings about power. Much more flat-footed than he used to be. Settling down on his punches as he moves up in weight, and it's a necessity because he needs to punch harder to make an impression on 140 pounders. How much did you change in the course of going from 160 to 175, Roy? I didn't change much. I kept pretty much the same power, same speed. I kept pretty much everything. Once again, Mayweather leans over, winks at Harold Letterman this time, to Letterman's great plea. Letterman will give him a two-point round out of this. <laughs> Counterpunching by Floyd Mayweather. Taking advantage virtually every time Brazellas tries to throw with a well chosen answer. Whatever the distractions of his uh, legal tribulations and even the fact that he doesn't fight very often. Mayweather tends to take care of business. He trains very hard. Four and a half minute rounds when he, when he spars. Uh, so none of that stuff has affected him inside the ring. The, the At ring. all. And that's how it's supposed to be. That's a true businessman. You handle your business where you handle your business at, you know? So, where's the weakness? If any. And Floyd yep. doesn't really have a weakness. <laughs> He's a complete fighter. 
He's even shown he can take a shot. Yeah, the only weakness of a complete fighter like Floyd and myself is the fact that it's you your own weakness. <laughs> Meaning that he got to be careful getting in and out of trouble, make sure he concentrates on what he's doing, trying to get in shape and stay focused on what he's doing. At that, Floyd, nobody's going to beat him right now. Another way of saying the only way you can, the only person who can beat him is himself. Exactly. Floyd is having a disagreement with his uncle and trainer Roger Mayweather. They stand. Floyd not yet having sat down. He had a had a fiery moment. But he seemed to be telling Roger, don't tell me how easy this is supposed to be. I'm the one who's in there fighting. So don't think. You throw right up, shoot right up and cut right behind. No problem. Alright? No problem. Boom, boom. You went right through the motherfucker. And he reaching with the right hand, okay. feigning and okay. checking with the wrong. Don't lose your head. He see Floyd set him up with one, two punches, and then a good left hook off of the third punch. He threw two small punches, left, right, then brought a big left hook right there between Bruce Ellis's hook, and it was one of the best punches of the round for Floyd. And what I found interesting was that he noticed, that we noticed, uh, that little dust-up with his trainer, Roger Mayweather, and then he sat down and started saying, no problem, Unc, no problem, Unc, and looked over at us to make sure we knew that they were on the same page. Hey, listen, turbulence is the rule of the day in the Mayweather family. What looks like an argument in the Mayweather family may just be normal behavior for them because conflict is a part of their daily lives, quite frankly. <laughs> to the body by Mayweather after Priscillus landed a couple of his best shots of the fight. We mentioned that Priscillus is sturdy and strong. I think he's showing it just by standing up under the assault that Mayweather's laid on him. There he is. But if he stood up under Cotto for 30 rounds and he's used to some of this... Miguel Cotto, an exceptionally heavy puncher at 140, particularly to the body. Brucellis helped prepare Cotto for his most recent fight as his lead sparring partner, so then Cotto turned around and returned the favor by being Brucellis' lead sparring partner for this fight. Internet question for you, Roy Jones. Is there anything Brucellis could do to change the fight and get back into it? Land a big, big shot when Floyd is not expecting it, but what he should have done earlier was push the pace a little harder to make it a, a more of a dog fight for Floyd. Because if you let Floyd have a chase like he's doing, Floyd will be here doing this all night. The trouble with pushing the pace earlier against Floyd, of course, is that Floyd's such an accurate puncher with so much hand speed that he'd hit Brucellis even more often than he has. Not really. He's getting caught all night anyway. He's been getting caught just as much as he'd have got caught had he been pushing the pace. So what's the difference? I got you. If you don't get hit, you may as well take it on early. I got it, I got it. Watch your head, watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head. Quick left hook inside by Mayweather. Good uppercut. As we said, he leads or he counters. Either way, he's remarkably accurate, uniquely effective, and Brucellis is starting to wobble from the accumulated damage of all these punches. Brucellis is making it halfway through the fight, but he's paid a heavy price to get here. Wednesday 10 p.m. Tune in to Inside the NFL. Join Bob Costas, Chris Collinsworth, Dan Marino, and Chris Carter for a look back at tomorrow's conference championship games and a preview of the upcoming Super Bowl.
Oh, oh, tira por la nariz, por la boca. Tira por la nariz. Breathe through your mouth. Come on, breathe through your mouth. You can do it, man. You can do it. Come on, work it, work it, hit him. Seven rounds, seven rounds. Gracias. You've got the condition. Un poquito en el pecho. A look at the Magic City, downtown Miami. The skyline continues to grow as construction boom, which has made Miami one of the most glamorous and high architecture cities in the world, continues here. Hey, Roy. Oh. Before I uh, before I get to this, we'll go to Harold Letterman. Excuse me a second. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> okay, Jim. 60 to 54, six rounds to nothing. Floyd Mayweather Jr. You know, you know, Jim, Floyd's father was a fighter. Roy Jones' father was a trainer. Guys like this are born into the game. I mean, he's such a natural, but not as clinic. I mean, beautiful shots, combinations, jams, lead right hands, great defense, turns his body just like Roy does. I think it's a super performance by Floyd Mayweather. All right, so Roy, do you like the Steelers or the Patriots? Well, I like the Patriots, but I've been a Steeler fan for a long time. Floyd tells us, incidentally, I ask you the question, and Floyd looks here and says, as the Patriots. <laughs> and do you like the Eagles or the Falcons? That's a close game. I'm a very close friend of Michael Vicks. So I want to see my friend make it, but I also have a lot of respect and I love Donovan McNabb. So it's a toss-up game. Two classy I, guys. Yeah, very classy guys. Uh, I think Philadelphia has the experience edge, but Mike Vick is a Roy Jones in the game. You never know what he might pull off. Might get knocked out, Roy. They might <laughs> knock somebody out, too. <laughs> I'll have to wait until Mayweather comes to this side of the ring to ask him whether he likes the Eagles or the Falcons. We know he's already picked the Patriots while in the middle of punching Henry Brucellis. You know, something, well, it is a, you know, certainly a virtuoso performance by Mayweather, but we ought to also note in passing uh, who the opposition is. He turned down stronger fighters, didn't want to fight him. Such as? Well, one was uh, Mohamed Abdullayev, the Olympic gold medalist. Uh, there were several others, but they said, well, uh, they don't think that's necessary because uh, let's remember, uh, they're trying to build toward a big fight against Gaddy. When does one of the other title holders let the Guyanan star, Vivian Harris, into this rotation? <laughs> well, Vivian Harris has to let himself into the rotation. He was offered a fight underneath the Gaddy fight next week, he rejected it. Uh, a pretty good payday for him. Uh, he thinks he's gonna make a lot more money down the road, so he's being cautious. And you may recall he also turned down a fight with uh, Miguel Cotto. So he, he's, he's young, he's 26 years old, I believe. He's got time and uh, feels that eventually some big fight will come along. I don't know if he's right, he's got to get some exposure, but that's apparently what he thinks. Between rounds, we will show you on replay the moment when Floyd Mayweather, answering my question to Roy Jones, picked the Patriots to win tomorrow. Keep protecting his body. Listen up. The Patriots. <laughs> Now, this, this follows an incident years ago when I, in the middle of a fight, said that's the second time Floyd has switched southpaw and he looked at me and said, third time. He protecting it, man. Listen to me. Run the jacket stop. Fuck him. He ready to go anywhere. Hey. He ready to go anywhere. Run the jacket stop. Run the jacket stop. Run the jacket stop. Come on, man, throw four. He's waiting for you to throw two, so he can throw you four. Come on, you're going to throw two. Throw four, throw five. But down and up, down and up, mix it. Evangelist Takoto making the same suggestion to Henry Priscellis that Roy Jones was making. Go ahead and open up and throw more and try to fight at a faster pace and force something. You're going to get hit anyway. <laughs> Marcellus has wobbled a few times, but so far has held up under Mayweather's power punch assault. Mayweather, as is so frequently the case, has basically done whatever he wanted against Marcellus. Eagles and Falcons, Floyd. He likes Michael Vick. I gotta stop.
stop this so that I don't distract him. <laughs> it's too easy. You're going to distract him. He got this under control. Body shot by Mayweather as Priscilla's right hand was waving over his head. Somewhere at ringside. Oh, what a show. What a show. Somewhere at ringside, what? Well, uh, Mayweather's bodyguard is sitting, uh, holding all his jewels with him, guarding the jewels. Mayweather being one of those uh, modern athletes who thinks that diamonds are a boy's best friends. No, 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 I got it, come around. by someone at ringside who said, no, no, stop it, and that's why the fight was stopped. Mayweather closed the show, landing 20 of 29 of his last power shots. That fight looked a little like the Corley fight. Well, we did see Sam Peter tonight. Well, you've already commented on, uh, on what you think happens in Mayweather Gaddy. Suppose somewhere down the road as right we look at, look at this. Knockdowns, he's the jab to the body, shot an overhand right to the top, but the body shots like that left and that right body shot right there are really what did it. Yep. They pretty much wore him down. Once again, you see him, he set him up with the jab to the body, and he come back, he taps him with a left body shot, and he digs a right, right to the solar plex, and that pretty much did it. Perfect shot. Second knockdown, he's pretty much through already, he's tired, there was another body shot that definitely took the fight out of him. A soft hook to the head, but the body shot is what did the damage tonight. Right. The right to the solar plexus. Yeah. Same place where Arturo Gatti knocked out Leonard Doreen last year with a body shot like that. Yeah, that was a beautiful body shot he threw. And, of course, that follows the theme we've been setting up here because now that Floyd Mayweather has gotten past Henry Brucellus, he'll wait to see what happens between Arturo Gatti and James Leha next week to see if that pay-per-view tussle can be set up for later this year. And let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particular on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jorge Alonso calls a halt to the contest. The official time, 2 minutes, 55 seconds of round number 8. The winner by TKO, still undefeated. The pound for pound, the best in the world, the former two-time world champion, the undefeated pretty boy Floyd Mills. So he's still unbeaten and continues to try to stake his claim as not the number two behind Hopkins, but rather the number one pound for pound fighter in the sport. Maybe they should be one and one A. There's a look at total punches. 
Mayweather 219 out of 440. Hopkins' campaign will continue February 19 against Howard Eastman. He's now 40 years old. Brusellis landing 24% of his own punches. Power punches, it was a Mayweather festival as he landed nearly 60% of his power shots. Even if you're fighting a fly, if he lands 60% of his power shots, eventually he'll do some damage. Let's go to Larry Merchant with Floyd Joy Mayweather. Thank you very much, Jim. Uh, congratulations, Floyd. And uh, who's this you got in your arms here? Uh, this is my daughter, Ayana. Uh, Ayana Mayweather, my oldest daughter. First of all, I want to thank God for this victory. And uh, I feel good tonight. You were in with an opponent who couldn't do anything to you, so did... After a few rounds, the whole thing come down to, I've got to stop this guy? Well, I just took my time to listen to my corner. Uh, he was tough. I hit him with some good shots, and he, and he took the shots early on. But I knew eventually the shot was going to break him down, and um, I was going to drown him in deep waters once he got late. What was that little dust-up you had with, with Uncle Roger in the corner? I, I was telling him, Roger, I told you um, I trained hard for this fight. And I told him it's going to be easy work. My Uncle Roger is the best trainer in the world. And we've done it for all the fans back in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and all the fans over the world. But, but what, what was the little dispute about? N no dispute, no dispute. We're having fun. Me and my Uncle Roger's having fun. The best trainer in the world is Roger Mayweather, and we all know it. Do you believe that the fight with Arturo Gatti will come off in June if he wins next week? Well, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. It's a good fight next week. Arturo Gatti's a... A, a tough opponent. I want to fight the best they got out there. I would love to fight Constance Zhu or Toro Gotti, the best out there. And I hear that Shane Mosley is coming down to 147. I hear Oscar De La Hoya is coming down to 147. For Floyd Mayweather is willing to go to 147 and fight Shane Mosley or fight Oscar De La Hoya. Um, Gotti was supposed to be here tonight to watch you in person to help to build up the big fight. But he seems uncertain because of some of the problems you have that it's ever going to come off. Is it going to come off? Uh, Otoro Gotti fighting Floyd Mayweather will fight this summer. It will happen. It's a big pay-per-view fight. I want all the fans to tune in this summer because Floyd Mayweather is fighting four times this year. This is my first fight back on HBO after eight months, and I'm ready to go. Thank you very much, Floyd. Thank you for having me. Congratulations again. It's so funny because Floyd's father, Floyd Mayweather Sr., loves to call himself the greatest trainer in the world in boxing. And so Floyd makes the point, well, my Uncle Roger, his brother, is the greatest trainer in the world. This yeah. is another impeccable show for uh, Floyd Mayweather. It's hard to imagine how he could get any better. Wonderful show for Floyd Mayweather. I think he fought an exceptional fight tonight. Vivian Harris told me to tell Larry Merchant that if you tell a story on him again, he's going to kill him. He said that he did not turn down a fight with uh, Miguel Cotto, and he'll fight Miguel Cotto any day of the week. And if Larry keep running his mouth, somebody's going to jump on him. That's what he told me to tell him. Now, I ain't got nothing to do with that, though. You're promoting fights again, huh? I'm always promoting. Vivian Harris versus Larry Merchant. A lot of people have been waiting for that one. Floyd mentioned... Uh, uh, Oscar De La Hoya, Shane Mosley, Mosley Costa Zoo. I don't know if I were Oscar De La Hoya or Shane Mosley if I'd even want to give Floyd Mayweather a chance against me at well, 147 pounds. Well, because he had everything to gain and nothing to lose, and they would have everything to lose and nothing to gain. Exactly. So that would be really a dumb fight for either one of those guys, but you never know what happens in this game. Money talks, and you never know. If Mayweather were to get a chance to beat Costa Zoo and do it, maybe he'd be a big enough star that the money would make it talk. That, that would be a good fight. I would also like to see him maybe take on a person like a Zab Judah. All right. Well, we'll see what happens down the road. Meanwhile, next week we'll get a chance to see whether Gaddy Mayweather comes into clear focus as Gaddy gets ready for James Leha. And Larry, uh, half of that equation is now in place. Your final reflections on Floyd Mayweather Jr. and the heavyweight fight with Sam Peter. We saw Sam Peter. We want to see more of him. <laughs> we will see more of Floyd Mayweather. Um, with all the uh, problems he's had outside of the ring, I'm reminded of uh, one of the lyrics in a new country and western song by Toby Keith about the bar he loves. And it goes, we've got winners, we've got losers, we've got sinners, we've got boozers. It's boxing, very few saints in boxing. I love the way you quote the lyrics. I might need to get you some new record albums. <laughs> All right, we'll have a final word on what happened here in the ring in just a moment. Right now, let's look ahead to um, uh, some upcoming programs here on HBO.